Siemi Mbote to all the Bantu family all over the world, to the dispersed and outcasts of Isolele. May the spirit of Yakongo come upon you wherever you are in this world. I will begin to start. I will read from the book of Zephaniah 3 verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliant, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. This scripture tells us that beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, suppliant, the suppliant of Tatanzambe, which also means the worshipper, the worshipper of Tatanzambe, who is also called the daughter of my dispersed, the daughter of his dispersed, shall bring him an offering. Yeah, And dispersed is another word for scattered. And so, those who are scattered, who Tatanzambe calls my worshipper, suppliants, my worshippers, who are also identified as the daughter of my scattered people. Yes? Yahunde. Beyond the river of Ethiopia, they shall bring mine offering. Mine offering. They shall bring mine offering. That word for offering, uh, minka in the Yiddish, is actually menga in the Kikongo, menga, hmm? oh, which means an offering um, given to Tatanzambe or an offering given to a noble man as a king. Remember when uh, Saul. Saul, when King Saul became king over Israel, many brought him gifts. Gifts. Now those gifts were minka in the Yiddish, menga in Kikongo, menga, which means a gift, an offering presented to kings, to nobles, or to Tatanzambe. Yes. Now. I was searching the web uh, for information about the lost tribes of Isolele. I don't even remember why, but I came across this interesting article and I would like to share it with you. Um, let's read it. The 10 lost tribes of Israel. 10 of the original 12 Hebrew tribes, which under the leadership of Joshua took possession of Canaan, the promised land, after the death of Moses. They were named Asher, Dan, Ephraim, Gad, Issachar, Manasseh, Naphtali, Reuben, Simeon, and Zebulun, all sons or grandsons of Jacob. In 9030 BC, the ten tribes formed the independent kingdom of Isolele in the north, and the two other tribes, Yahunde and Benyamunu, Benjamin, set up the kingdom of Yahunde in the south. Following the conquest of the northern kingdom by the Assyrians in 721 BC, the ten tribes were gradually assimilated by other people and thus disappeared from history. No, we did not disappear. Nevertheless, a belief persisted that one day the ten lost tribes will be found. Now, listen listen to this. Now, there's this guy. Eldat Hadani, for instance, a 9th century Jewish traveler reported locating the tribes beyond the rivers of Abyssinia. Now, Abyssinia is an ancient word, an archaic word, archaic. It's an archaic word for the kingdom of Ethiopia. The kingdom of Ethiopia was once called Abyssinia. Or Abyssinia. Yeah. So this Eldat Hadani, a 19th century Jewish traveler, found 
the tribes beyond the rivers of Ethiopia as we read in Zephaniah 3 verse 10 <laughs> beyond the rivers of Ethiopia on the far side of an impassable rivers called Sam Sambation okay who was this Eldad and how did he identify the tribes beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. How did he identify them? Now, let's have a look in, into who this man was. Eldad ben Ha, Eldad ben Malihadani was his full name. Uh, English Eldad the Danite. Mm, flourished uh, the 19th century. Jewish traveler and philologist who was generally credited with the author authorship of a fanciful geographical narrative that exerted an enduring influence throughout the Middle Ages. Okay, now he was a Jewish traveler and a philologist. That's the most important thing. Now, what is a philologist? The word philology, the noon philology, uh, can be defined as the branch of knowledge that deals with the structure, historical development, and relationships of a language or languages. Hmm. So, he's one who studied languages. So, he was a... Um, uh, how do you say that? A professional, eh? one who studied languages, the structure, the historical development, and the relationship of languages. That was his, uh, yeah, his, his, his field of expertise. When he entered the territory, which he identifies as the geographical locations beyond, beyond the rivers of Abyssinia he came in contact with a group of people and by his expertise as a philologist he identified those people as the ten lost tribes of Hisolele crazy right now let me read something about uh, now let me read something out of a book called the history of Luango and Kakango from 1776 the idiom of Kakango nearly the same with that of Luango and Ngoyo Samba and other small circumjacent states differs essentially from that of Congo. Several similar articles and a great number of common roots seem, however, to indicate that this language had a common origins. But they know not which of the two is the mother tongue. The clevers among the natives have not the smallest idea of the origin and progress of the language. They speak, say they, as they have heard their father speak. It has been thought that there might be perceived, per, perceived some marked connections between this language and some ancient tongues. <laughs> Especially the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So it's telling you that these people beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, hmm, that there is a connection between this language that they speak and some ancient tongues. And do you hear that? Ancient tongues. Especially the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Though the missionaries, in considering the richness and beauty of the language, you hear that? The richness, who? The missionary, 
in considering the richness and beauty of the language, suspected that it was formerly written. Which language are they talking about? The language that they found beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now this Eldad Hadani, a Jewish traveler of the 9th century, he came into that location. He communicated with the people and he began to discern according to his expertise as a philologist hey there are similarities uh, with 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 the hebrew and with the greek and and according uh, to what he found there he stated that he had found the last 10 tribes of isolele it was in the language he identified the people by the language. So, they perceived a connection between the language which those people were speaking eh, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that it had some ancient tongues, especially the Hebrew, the Greek, and the Latin. Now, let's go to the, uh, to the Bible. Now let's find out if our forefathers had contact with the Greek and the Latin speaking people. John 19 verse 19 till 20. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was Isaiah of Nazareth, the king of the Yahundi. This title then read many of the Yahundi, for the place where Isaiah was crucified was nine to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. It was written in Hebrew, Greek and Latin. So Greek and Latin is found in the language of the Kakongo, the language of Luango, and in Kikongo itself, Greek words and Latin words are found. Now, and the missionaries, considering the richness and the beauty of the language, they suspected that it was formerly written. Now, let me tell you a story. I spoke to my mother a few weeks back, and she told me this incredible story. She said when she was still in the Congos, <clears throat> her father came uh, and gathered all the children, you know, her brothers, her siblings, uh, etc. And they came, and their father took uh, a jar, an uh, um, earthen jar, and took out of that jar something that resembled uh, um, an animal skin yeah and on that animal skin were written the genealogy of her family of her father's house and her father told her by opening eh, by unfolding that uh, um, uh, animal skin and he showed all his children including my mother see this is the genealogy of our family and he read out of it all the names which were written so now by her testimony as her tata her father had shown her that our grandfathers our ancestors they had knowledge and the science of writing yes they had it now in 1850 the portuguese came into mbanza congo and they began to do excavations there you know they, they began to do excavations and as they were digging they found earthen vessels jars in the ground when they carefully removed the jars and opened it they found animal skins all the jars full with animal skins 
and on both sides written. So the animal skins were like do hidden documents in the earth. Our forefathers, they had this tradition of writing things, you know, writing documents on animal skin, putting them in earthen vessels to preserve them, and then to bury them in the ground, so that when the enemy comes and destroy the country, destroy the city, destroy the village, that those uh, vessels will be preserved. Okay? It was a tradition of our ancestors. Now that earthen vessels, they call it uh, kalu, they call it kalu, which means vessel, earthen vessel or jars, earthen jars. Yeah? And the animal skin in Kikongo is called kanda. Kanda means writing, it can also mean a letter. A letter. So it means writing, kanda, writing. It also means uh, animal skin. Yeah, it also means animal skin. So put it together, writings on an animal skin. That's what kanda means. Now, if you go, if when we go to the book of Jeremiah, uh, 32 we will see that our forefathers had this tradition of not only writing on the animal skin, but also preserving the writings in uh, earthen uh, jars and they buried it in the ground yeah, so that it may, will be uh, uh, remain for many generations. Okay, Jeremiah 32 verse 14. Thus said Tatanzambe, the Elimo of Yisolele, take these evidences, these evidences of the purchase, because Jeremiah had purchased uh, a property, he has purchased a property, he wrote it down on animal skin, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, yeah? and put them in earthen vessels that they may continue many days. Yeah. So Jeremiah wrote everything on the, on, on the animal skin. He put it in earthen vessels so that it may remain many days. And he buried it in the ground. He buried it in the ground. Okay. Now, we know that animal skin, um, there is a word for animal skin. It's called uh, par parchment, if I pronounce it correctly. It is called parchment. And a parchment is a writing material made from especially prepared untenant skins of animals, primarily sheep, calves, and goats. It has been used as a writing medium for over two millennia. See? So a parchment is a writing material made from animal skin. That's a parchment. Now, when we go to the book of uh, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy uh, 4, verse 13, then here is the Apostle Paul, Paulo, and he says the following, 13, excuse me. And he's giving Timothy this command. The cloak that I lay, left, the cloak that I left at Troas with carpers, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. But especially the parchments. So he wanted to have his cloak. It must be... Uh, a very special cloak. He wanted Timothy to bring the books, but especially the parchment, the parchment, the parchment, kanda, the writings on animal skin. And he valued the Apostle Polo, he valued the parchment, the kanda, eh, the written, uh, the written word on animal skin above the other books. Because he wanted specially 
the animal skin with the writings. Yeah, the narrative that our forefathers didn't know uh, writing or didn't have the science of writing is false. They did write. They did. So if you go if we go back to the book of Luango, we see that the Hebrew, the Greek and Latin Greek and Latin is found in our language, in the Kikongo and in all the Kikongo dialect languages in uh, Sub-Sahara Africa. Uh, and the missionaries, con in considering the richness and beauty, the beauty of the language, suspected that it was formerly written. Now, let me read, let us read... Uh, another part out of this book here it states there are also found in the language many words pretty much resembling Hebrew words and which have the same signification in Hebrew bana or bana hence is derived the word ben son signifies he has built because they considered the children as living stones which composed the uh, edicise of the family. Yeah? Yes, we do. The children are the living stones by which a family is built, the tribe and the nation. In Kakango, mania signifies stones. And bana, children. Yes, we say bana, bana, uh, children. And ntama, I'm familiar with that word, but ntama means a rule, a measure, a measure. And in Hebrew, tamam, hmm, or tamam, what's this? Fullness. And perfection in the language of the Negroes see, now they're calling us Negroes in the language of the Negroes the lower part the foundation in Hebrew infa ifa which is written e e half e e whatever signifies lower part or foundation uh, Kuma, to approach, to meet, in Hebrew, kum, to rise up and go and meet. Like, uh, and lika, lika, to eat, in Hebrew, lakam. Now, what they're doing here, they are giving you the, uh, uh, the words, you know, the words that are similar to the Hebrew. So, the words that the uh, Kakango and uh, all those uh, in those area use and they are comparing it the similarities they are comparing the similarities with the Hebrew that's what they're doing here so when they talk about Bana eh, and Ben eh, being son when they talk about uh, uh, Tama being uh, uh, perfection and here Kuma which means to come to meet and Lika which means to eat or oh, in Kikongo, kolia, lika, to eat, in Hebrew, lakham, which is written lakham, signifies the same thing. And likem or lekem means bread, bread, likem, likem, in Lingala, lipa, likem means bread. Now, there are many more. This is the Hebrew. Let's jump to the Greek uh, similarities. In the language of those beyond the river of Ethiopia, the connection of the language with the Greek appear equally marked. marked. Besides several con constructions of familiar phrases, 
Yeah, it's old English, so excuse me. There are, as we have observed, several verbs which change their initials and take augments and double letters as with the Greeks. There are to be found also a great number of words which differ little from Greek from Greek words and signify the same thing you see so they are not only similarities in word but also in the meaning they have the same meaning ay 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 bafita which is pronounced bafitu means like the yeah what's that ba bafilius of the Greeks Chief man or dignity. Bembo, noise, found or sound of a voice. In Greek, bembex, noise of wind. Bima, uh, paste. Bialia, uh, what's this? Fructuals in Greek, and what belongs to life. Doko, to walk or to follow. <laughs> In Greek, dioko, dioko, I pursue. Fula, to blow. Fula, to blow. In Greek, folis, folis, bellows, bellows. Kama, a mount, an obstacle. In Greek, kamax. A flake or a prop. Mazia, Mazia, the waters, the sources, in Greek, Mazos, which means the nurse teeth. Now, that's the Greek. So, there are many similarities, many. I will not read them all. And if we go to the Latin similarities, we will see out of the Latin, you have, we see here, mes, mesa. Mesa is table. You know, uh, in Kikongo and Lingala, mesa, table. And here we see pasi, both in Kikongo and Lingala, pasi, which means suffering. And from the word passi uh, came the word passion, suffering. And mongo, which means mountain, mene, morning, bene, uh, much largely, strongly. And then we have nzala, which means zeal, <laughs> zeal, nzala, in the Latin zealous. Hmm? Or zealous in the Latin zealous. Uh, in the Greek, you also have um, zalo, zalo, which means hunger. Hmm? From the Lingala and zala, which also means zeal. Um, um, okay. Now, I think we'll, we will keep it there. Eh? So there, there are. Similarities in the Greek, in the Hebrew, with the Latin. And let me give you this one. It's it's a nice one. Nah. They acknowledge a supreme being who, having no origin, is himself the origin of all things. They believe he was created. They believe he has created all that is fine. All that is good in the universe. Wow. That being by nature just. Yes, that Anzambe is just. He loves justice in others. Yes, we do. And severely, severely punishes fraud and Perjury. They call them zombie. You see this? 
this creator God, the master of the universe, who created all things that is fine, all the good things in the universe, who loves justice and punishes fraud and perjury. Our ancestors called him Zombie. Zombie. Ampungutulendu. They take his name in testimony of the truth. And they regard perjury as one of the greatest of crimes. They even pretend that a species of malady called Zombie and Pungu is the punishment of it. And they say when they flee, when they see one attacked with it, there is a perjured man. No. Beside this just and perfect God, they admit another to whom they give quite different attributes. The first created all, the latter will destroy all. He delights in the disorder and evil which he causes among men. It is he who uh, counsels them to injust, injustice, perjury, theft, poisonings and all crimes. Who is this? Who is this? This is no other than Ha Satan, Satani, the devil. He is the author of all accidents. So our ancestors, they had the language. Hebrew, Greek, and Latin words are found in the language of those people who are located beyond the river of Ethiopia or Abyssinia. And before the, the, the European came or arrived, they already uh, were acknowledging a supreme being, the creator of heaven and earth. They had no images. But they, will, they, they were praising and worshipping the Creator God. The one and only. Yeah. And they knew that there was an enemy who causes uh, uh, injustice in the world. Who afflicts humanity. And they call them the God of wickedness. Hmm. Now, speaking of the language, there is, of course, uh, something special with our language. And I will read this part to show you what I'm talking about. Now, let's read this portion here. The qualities of the person or thing are expressed by substantive substantives which give to the uh, discourse a strength and energy of which our language is not susceptible you see so what they are saying here is that when when you speak the language of these people there is a strength and energy that comes with it Okay, so there is a strength and energy that comes with the language, yeah, which is not susceptible with their own language, the language of the European, yeah, and sus sus susceptible means uh, capable of uh, the same, uh, capable of the same action, or capable of you know, the same results. Interesting, right? So, the language that those who speak, those people beyond the river of Ethiopia, there is a strength and energy to it. Not found in the European languages. Huh. 
in geta in geta now here you see that we are not lost we have never been lost what they did is that they just um, hid our history and they denied our history and um, denied the existence of our ancestors yeah that's what they did but we have never been lost but scattered scattered but not lost scattered and because they hid all the knowledge which they uh, documented they hid it for us all the information they hid it and as a result they gave us Christianity and made us ignorant of who our ancestors were and of who we sell we ourselves are but did at the days of renewal and we are coming back to our identity all right you solele i am done with this message um, i hope you enjoyed it and remember the times of restitution has begun let's return to tatanzam beyaman zulu and let's remember the law of massa and our ancestors with that, I say blessings to all. Ingeta.